Hi guys and welcome to this watercolor painting tutorial. We're gonna go through how to paint this magnolia flower illustration step by step. I'll really try to slow it down in this video so you can really see how to approach a painting like this. And this is maybe a little bit more advanced compared to some of my other tutorials, but I really encourage you to give this a try anyway. The end result really doesn't matter. And more importantly, I think this is a great practice to learn how to control water and layer color in your watercolor paintings. But yeah, we're starting everything by preparing our paper here. I cut a piece of my Windsor and Newton cold press watercolor paper. I recommend you to use large enough surface for this so that you have enough room for the flowers. It will be much more difficult to add details into very small flowers. So that's why we're keeping the size of everything pretty generous here. And then before adding any water to this paper, we are going to start from a light pencil sketch. I used a few different reference pictures for the flowers and I really recommend you to find a few for yourself as well. It will be much easier to create the correct shape of the flower and most importantly, it will show you where to add the lights and shadows in this picture. So I decided to go with these two bigger flowers here. So I just sketched out all the outlines of the petals. Since the final picture will be quite light, I tried my best to go with a pretty light hand here. It will be difficult to erase any pencil strokes after you've added the color on top. And also erasing too much in this point might damage the paper a little bit. So I was just trying to be very careful, but at the same time, having a sketch down will make the whole process much easier for us. So I think it's definitely worth it. And if you struggle with starting a sketch like this, I sometimes just like to draw a very light circle or some sort of basic shape to start with. And then you can use that as the guideline for the rest of the petals. But the good thing about flowers is that they come in all different shapes and sizes. So even if the end result doesn't exactly look like your reference picture, it's really not that big of a deal. But now that we have a basic idea of our flower shapes here, I erased all the unnecessary pencil strokes and then we can start with the actual painting part. I'll use my very dirty and well-loved watercolor set and then these three different round brushes for this. I think these are definitely my most used brushes. If this is not your first video here on this channel, you've definitely seen me using these before. But yeah, so we're actually gonna start from the background wash. I didn't want to get any color to the flower areas in this point, which might be a little bit tricky, but if we use our time and go around them very carefully, it's gonna be okay. You could also use something like the masking ink if you really want to keep the shapes clean, but I didn't think it was necessary for this picture. But yeah, I wanted the background to be pretty light and very blown out. And we can achieve that with the wet on wet technique. So we're going to wet the whole background area first with clear water. And you can see how I'm adding the water around the flowers by following our sketches. You need to be pretty fast here so that your paper doesn't dry in between. And this is one of those things where having good quality watercolor paper will definitely make a difference. It generally doesn't dry as fast, so you're able to work with the same areas a little bit longer. But then after the background is wet, now we can start to add the colors. And you can see how the colors will blend together with the first layer of water and create this very smooth and seamless looking effect. I added a little bit more darkness to the lower part of this painting and also just threw in some other color spots in there, which will pretty much blend to the background. But I think it still adds slightly different tones to the final picture.
but then when the background layer has completely dried, we can finally start with the flowers themselves. I started with much darker tones than what we did in the background, but these will still just be the first layers we're adding to the flowers. The lowest parts will be the darkest, so that's where I kind of laid down most of the color first, and then you can start to blend it upwards by adding water to the whole petal and very lightly starting to bring the color upwards. It's a little bit difficult to explain what I'm doing here, and I don't even know if I'm following any specific technique. This is one of those things that you have to try and fail a few times yourself to get the hang of it. But anyway, I decided to work with one petal at a time here, because that's the only way we can create these very clean shapes without blending all the petals together. I think this is definitely the trickiest part of watercoloring that takes a lot of practice, but basically the main rule is that the color will always follow the water. So if you want to leave clean lines, you either need to let the first part dry before starting the part next to it, or you need to leave a small sliver of paper in between so that the two different sections won't blend together. I would also advise you to limit the amount of water you have in your brush, because the more water you add to the paper, the more difficult it is to control it. But yeah, after I was somewhat happy with these pink petals that were on the outsides of the flower, it was time to add just a little bit of color to the inner portions as well. In my reference pictures, the inner sections looked basically white, but the problem is that they won't really stand out against the background if you don't add any color in them. So I decided to add just the smallest amount of this grayish blue tone to the outlines of those inner petals. I think it added just enough definition in them, but it still makes them stand out against the pink outer layers. Then I just followed the same steps with the smaller flower. This one just has these two petals that are hanging away from the rest. So again here I colored the outer parts of the petals with these darker pink shades and then added some grayish details to the inner petals. If you were just looking for some quick watercolor painting session, you could definitely leave the flowers here and call it a day, but I decided to add a little bit more details to them with this super tiny brush. So again, we need to let everything dry in this point, and after that I started to add some definition to the darkest shadows and just create some of the stripes and texture that will add a little bit more realistic appearance to this whole illustration. This is also a good point to fix any crooked lines or shapes you might still have in there, and maybe cover any small spots that you didn't reach with the bigger brush. And again, I did the same thing for the smaller flower too, and even though it feels like you're not doing much in this point, I think it definitely makes a big difference in the final picture. Thank you. 
But then when you're finally happy with the flowers, it's time to add the final branch in here. I added some bright green to the top parts of the branch and I think it added a very nice contrast with all the pink shades in this picture. And then I really tried not to make these too smooth because again if you study your reference pictures the branches in real life are very rarely smooth there are all kinds of bumps and angles in tree branches so trying to recreate some of that will usually give you a better end result then after that i also added some very light shapes to the background this is not necessary by any means, but I just thought the background looked a little bit weird when it was completely smooth. And then there was just these two bigger flowers standing against it. So adding some loose shapes at least makes it look like there might be some more leaves or branches in the distance. And I think it often gives a more balanced look to a painting like this. But after that, it's time to remove the tapes and I also very lightly erase some of the pencil strokes. You can't really get all of them out, but at least it smooths out some of the edges. But yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, especially those of you who've been asking for more watercolor tutorials. I think the next one will be a gouache tutorial again. So if you have any requests for something you'd like to see, definitely keep those coming. And if you would like to see an extra monthly painting tutorial from me, I also now have a Patreon where you can get exactly that. It will be linked in the description, so definitely take a look if you're interested. But I guess that's all for today. If this was your first time here and you'd like to stay tuned for more, please consider subscribing. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day or night wherever you are. And see you in my next one. Bye-bye.